This is a podcast from the Voice of Sue. Observing New Zealand fisheries can broadly be divided into three main areas science, compliance, conservation. This podcast will deal with conservation. One aspect of an observer's daily routine is to keep an eye open for any marine mammals. Sometimes they can be a little bit difficult to spot, especially the smaller ones. If we are lucky enough to spot one, or many, we identify what sort of species they are. Here we have some common dolphins. Then we count how many there are. Once we've made an estimate, we watch them to determine what it is they are doing. They could be feeding, playing, or, in this case, travelling. Travelling dolphins never hang around very long. These common dolphins are heading northwest. With dolphins, I find the best way to identify them is by their colour patterns and the shape of their noses. So let's start with the bottlenose dolphin. These dolphins are mostly dark grey above and fade to light creamy grey underneath. They're also quite big at 3.8 metres long. They are mostly coastal animals and they're often seen riding the bow waves of boats. Bottlenose dolphins have a short stocky nose compared to the common dolphins which has a longer, slender nose. The most distinctive thing about common dolphins is the tan, cream-coloured hourglass pattern running along the sides of their bodies. They are smaller than the bottlenose dolphins at about 2.3 metres. Dusky dolphins have a dark upper body with white markings from their tail towards the middle of their bodies, a marking that is a W shape. They may also have a lighter patch on their dorsal fin. But it's the nose that gives it away, or lack of one. The sloping forehead and short beak looks quite different from the other two dolphins we've seen. They're also smaller, at only 2 metres. Dusky dolphins are also very acrobatic, and are often seen flipping and twisting in the air before gracefully falling back into the ocean. The smallest dolphin, at just 1.6 metres, also has a sloping forehead and short nose. The Hector's dolphin is a shallow, coastal animal. The distinctive, rounded shape of the dorsal fin is a key feature to identifying this species. We sure do. The most common mammal that we see is the New Zealand fur seal. They're often seen around the boat, which allows great photograph opportunities. They have pointy noses, external ears, and are dark brown in colour. And sometimes they spook the odd bird that doesn't know what's underneath them. In this case, it's a white cat mollymawk. Whales are more of a treat. It is a chance encounter that usually brings everyone on the boat to the bridge to catch a glimpse of them. These leviathan creatures inhabit the oceans of the world. Some species migrate yearly from Antarctica, where they've been feeding, to the tropics, where they breed. Part of their travel itinerary takes them past New Zealand. <coughs> whales are often hard to see because they spend most of their time underwater. When whales need to breathe, they come to the surface. As they surface, they exhale the old stale air from their lungs in a surge of mist that creates a spout. The spout of each whale species has a distinctive shape. The humpback spout is round, but the southern right whale has a distinctive V shape. So let's compare some of the other differences between these two species. Both whales are dark in colour, but the flippers of the humpback are white underneath. A humpback whale has a fin on its back, but the southern right whale does not have one. The shape of their flippers is also different. A humpback flipper can be one-third the length of its body, 
whereas the southern right whale flippers are short and squarish. A humpback whale has throat pleats, but the southern right whale does not. Southern right whales have callocytes on their head. These resemble concrete splatters and are an accumulation of barnacles and whale parasites that attach themselves to the hairs on the head. Humpback whales have knobbly lumps on their head and flippers that barnacles also attach themselves to. Southern right whales have a very high arched mouth that has long baleen plates, the longest of the large whales at 2.2 metres. The baleen acts as a sieve to remove krill from the water. Humpbacks also have baleen, but it is not as long and the mouth is not arched. Because we spend so much time out at sea, observers often see things that would normally slip away into the ocean undetected. We observe, record and report. This provides information about these rare species that scientists may not otherwise get. On a recent trip, very sadly, we saw a dead southern right whale. We were unsure at first, we thought it might have just been a bit of seaweed, but then the smell hit us. This whale was certainly not alive. Giant petrels and cape pigeons were all around it, and the giant petrels were riding on top of the whale like macabre hood ornaments. This was an unusual sight of a very rare species. Because it was floating belly up and I could see that it was the right colour. It had no throat pleats and the flippers were also a squarish shape. I also managed to briefly see the callocytes on the head as it moved through the swell. <coughs> Southern right whales were christened the right whale by those who hunted them. Because they spend most of their time swimming slowly near the coast, they were easy targets for the whalers. Once shot, they floated high in the water and could be towed back to shore easily. They also have a high blubber content and were a great source of whale bone. So the whales became known as the right whale because they provided all that the whalers needed. Sadly, this led to an overhunting of these whales in the 1800s. Today, they are one of the rarest in the world. Any information about them will help scientists determine how many are left in the population. Of all the things I've seen at sea, a dead southern right whale was certainly the most unusual. So now you know how to tell the difference between a bottlenose dolphin, a common dolphin, a dusky dolphin and a hector's dolphin. And you know some of the difference between the southern right whale and the humpback whale, you can let the Department of Conservation know if you see any of them. Remember to identify the species, estimate how many there are, and record when and where you saw them. Then you can be observers in your own right and help provide valuable information about the marine mammals that inhabit our coastlines. <laughs>